research and policy side. But then again, that's like two of half the room. So that uh, that can be there. What I could think of is that Pranima was so concerned about getting an unbiased perspective that she took some of the hasn't worked on India since uh, 2002. <laughs> she was just come here completely unencumbered with any knowledge <laughs> of the country uh, to give you some uh, closing uh, uh, statements. And uh, maybe because of that, um, uh, my, my overall reaction is I come away uh, perhaps a little bit more heartened. Uh, Back to this topic of how do you maximize the nutrition impact of social protection in India? And there are going to give you three reasons uh, why I think that. I think Harold started us off great this morning. And the first thing is there's a wonderful opportunity because, unlike many other Asian countries, uh, India has a very extensive social protection program, uh, which is not true of, of uh, many other uh, uh, Asian countries. And, and Harold brought up uh, the fact that um, there is a real opportunity here that with, and we heard some examples of how with a, a little bit of tweaking, uh, perhaps, and not, not that much, and we heard some examples today about uh, how you could do that uh, to make them more, uh, I don't think they're nutrition sensitive, uh, uh, um, that uh, that could be done. So it's a, I think there's a great opportunity and uh, that point should be made. The second reason is uh, we had a whole, we have great researchers in, in the room all, all day. So some have, have left to beat the traffic, but uh, some of you are still here. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, unlike the stereotype of, uh, I've heard a lot since I've done CIE of how uh, researchers are from Mars and policy makers are from Venus. Uh, and never the twain shall meet. But uh, what I heard here today was really good researchers who are very concerned about making an impact on policy and, and, and programs. Uh, and it was more on the how to, to do that. So that's a, a second reason uh, why I'm heartened. And the third is, uh, we just heard uh, now from a lot of people is that there is like a third demand side for policy makers for, uh, for, for evidence. Now that has to be qualified because um, the ability of the demanders to actually absorb the supply uh, is limited. They, I think what we've found is that sometimes um, uh, to be able to tell what is good research from bad research requires what people call here a broker of some sort. And, and that's a, a space that organizations like CIE and JPAL uh, are trying to, to fill, and it's really very important. And I'm really glad to see that uh, DFID uh, is trying to also make sure that there is funding for this sort of activity. I must say that uh, even among the OECD DAC countries, I think DFID sort of stands alone in terms of bringing the evidence-based perspective to policy making. Um, because that also can just make me uh, think about my last point, which is that we have to align expectations here a little bit. That uh, the capacity to absorb research is, is limited. But as people said, uh, decisions are made not just ba based on evidence. Decisions are made, as Chancellor made so forcefully, with uh, a, whole, for a whole bunch of reasons, including politics and and everything else. It's just that I think we all believe that evidence should be there as one of the factors, because in the absence of that, it's all politics. Mm -hmm. So with that, <laughs> yes. I want to thank you very much. For, it's been a wonderful day, and I've learned a lot. Great. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Manny. Um, so um, put this thing together and held it together and made sure that it was a really a very fruitful and productive day for all of us. So, so thank you to all of you and to the rest of the IFPRI crew. Um, Harold and Akhtar actually traveled here uh, to be with us, and you know I'm really grateful that both of you could be here because you brought some really important things to the table in terms of the studies you've done, the experiences you've had. Um, Manny and Joe, um, you were our informal partners. You sat here the whole day <laughs> and have made some really important contributions. 
So, so thank you, uh, as, as thank you all as well. Um, what do we see as some next steps from here? Um, we will firstly get what was discussed in this room out to, to many more people. Uh, we might come back to some of you for blogs. Uh, we certainly will put the PowerPoints, uh, the videos, and, and all of that material online so that some of that is more easily accessible and, and usable to people. Um, and around this particular topic, but I, I think also not just around the topic of social protection and nutrition, but around the topic of how do we as a community of researchers with a diverse set of research skills, you know, some of us, we, we like our RCTs, but we're also not afraid of large surveys. We're not afraid of qualitative work. And, and as a group of researchers, I, I think we bring sort of collective strength that can answer some really important questions. So I, I think one of the things we, we really need to do is to put our heads together uh, to think about what those questions might be. Um, and how do we approach a, a meaningful research agenda around topics such as this? I mean, we are personally committed to, to nutrition, but also committed to poverty and food security. And there's a plethora of research questions there that demand a set of thoughtful methods, not just RCTs. So, um, you know, Joe, Manny, Jasmine, folks that are thinking about research and then those who are engaging with the decision makers I think we need to put our heads together a little bit more around around that, yeah. Um, and maybe not just in a conference room, but um, more conducive environments that are even more conducive than this. So, so thank you all again. It's been a great day. We certainly did have attrition, and it's Friday afternoon, so it's much expected. Um, I hope you all have a good weekend, and thank you again to, to the team here. Thanks. Thanks.